Hello and welcome everyone to the inaugural session of our XPNA Fire Chats, where we discuss uh, trends and topics around extended planning and analytics, XPNA. And um, our topic today is a very important element of integrated planning procurement analytics. And for this, um, I'm very excited to have as my guest today, a former colleague uh, who also hails from the country where I was born, Austria, and even the same city, Vienna. The, uh, a veteran in this space um, who uh, has implemented uh, integrated planning for uh, a long time and uh, who is also an expert for procurement um, planning and analytics. And um, I would like to welcome Alex Hein, the CEO and founder of Smart PM Solution to today's session and hand over to you to for a quick introduction of yourself and, and the topic. Yeah, Martin, thanks for having me today. It's a pleasure to be a guest in the first uh, Fireside XP&A chat. So really an honor. Yeah, my name is Alex. I'm happy to meet you all guys. Um, I've been working in finance departments for more than 25 years now in different roles. And I'm in charge uh, of uh, finance of my own company. So for me, it's really a passion, extended planning and analysis, as we call it. As you can see on the screen, hopefully that works. You, this is our product family, which is living extended planning and uh, analysis. For today, the topic is um, procurement performance management, which is part of the whole uh, supply and demand balancing approach. So it's pretty much uh, very connected to sales and operations, project performance management and supply chain. But there is a lot of more um, to be shown throughout the next fireside chats. Thanks a lot, Alex. Um, what are currently you know, the, the key trends? Why procurement uh, planning uh, is becoming more and more important? Yeah, the thing is supply chain, um, volatile price development. Prices are going up everywhere. So we hear and we see from a lot of clients and um, prospects that they complain a lot about uh, their supply chain issues, especially with um, certain vendors, especially when they long to uh, procure key products or components, for example, like uh, chips, whatever you name it. So it's really a big issue for all companies uh, in manufacturing. Um, and the same goes uh, for those companies supplying skills, so in the service sector, but here it is more about uh, finding uh, the right resources and the skills for their teams. Uh, you know, I just had a chat with an Austrian CFO uh, who told me that at the moment there's a massive uh, issue with energy prices, where the energy prices have gone up 100%. Have you seen this in your... Uh, experience as well, and and uh, would this kind of solution support uh, this challenge? Yeah, absolutely. So the idea of <clears throat> our supply chain management, procurement performance management solution is to include internal, but as well as external resources and um, key players and market analytics to predict prices, to combine human and artificial intelligence to basically show up with uh, price forecasts and to include price forecasts with expected um, demand changes and balance that uh, in, in the sales and operations approach. Cool. And can, can you show us a few things um, how these kind of um, applications work? Yeah, my pleasure. Sure. So we have built uh, this uh, landing page or main menu, as we call it. So looking into procurement performance management, you see we address different roles, like um, typically the procurement and analyst, then uh, finance guys, the CPO, category management, and typical buyers. So basically, it's very much about working with initiatives of looking into savings and uh, spend trends, um, taking decisions out of uh, this analysis, looking into future prices and um, simulating, providing what-if analysis, 
working with different scenarios. So if we look basically, first of all, into this fully integrated XPNA workflow, we are looking today into sales, sales operations, procurement, which is part of this big picture of this overarching XPNA approach. So we would like to look into a task, we would like to look into a spend and um, define different tasks, look into who needs to do what to be successful in the planning process. And first step would be to analyze spend. And this is where we combine native Power BI features with the unparalleled options and powerful options uh, that, yeah, that Actaris brings to the table. So for example, we look into actuals, but actuals, okay. Um, more important from our perspective is to define targets and to provide what we call a top-down planning, which you can see here. So based on the analysis of spend analysis and the findings uh, we draw from that, we say, okay, we need to set targets for either cost limits for spend limits, or we need to set targets um, to provide savings. And this is where Actaris features come into play. So here on the top right hand side, for example, you see um, this table visual where you can edit new targets. It's very powerful because you can um, use, for example, increase and decrease uh, features. You can uh, work with shortcuts as you see here. For example, you might add a new um, saving target or you might want to increase or decrease the given targets. So in our example, we are going to increase our saving target by 5%, for example. This is um, how the new 4 million um, show up. We save this value and then we refresh the screen and the new top-down target of 4 million will be applied to the left-hand side three point of view. And this is how you can basically see how this um, target splashes or allocates to lower levels. This is how the system breaks back all the top-down figures to the respective dimensions. So this is not just a single target that you set um, uh, just as a standalone target, but this is really part of a multidimensional model that includes all the aspects that are relevant for the organization. So I can see here you have regions, product groups, uh, buyers, uh, subsidiaries. So this looked pretty easy, but I guess this is quite um, uh, a complex calculation in the background that has to allocate and distribute this number to the right dimensions that are used in the model. Exactly, it's a comprehensive multidimensional model, which was uh, built together with experts uh, from your team, from our team. So very important that data scientists and um, fp and experts work closely together to build that content. So we have like what we call an application design team, and they always um, try to be like on top of um, business development, on top of what uh, xp and experts need. And this is uh, basically the result in a technical, but very much in a finance-based way of looking at that. Okay, so with that having said, so that would be top-down target setting. And uh, next step would be to follow on and to follow up on these um, targets and basically work with um, budgeting and planning figures to predict and simulate and work with different uh, scenarios and to include external and internal um, resources and knowledge to uh, predict future prices. And um, this is where we work with uh, cost drivers a lot. So for indirect and uh, direct spend, it's uh, similar approaches. 
even though we use or we might want to use different category trees and component trees, as you could see here. So for indirect spend, could be a good approach uh, to work with what we call cost drivers. And for direct spend, it's very good to connect the system to sales and operation and demand planning so that you can even um, work with a bill of material, for example, to go to the very um, most detailed level, like raw material, for example. Looking at uh, indirect spend, you see cost drivers. And these cost drivers um, obviously impact products which we want to purchase. Here you can define and add new cost drivers, again, using the same Actarius uh, visual, the table visual, and then you can take it from there. So you have a price forecast, cost drivers definition. You might want to look into the development of different components or cost drivers, as we call it in that uh, phase. Here you see lower and uh, upper boundaries where a combination of human and artificial intelligence connecting to all kinds of sources predicts um, different price outcomes for the upcoming years. Based on all the details you see here. So we have a full tree of components. It's very comprehensive, as you can see here. So you can always drill down, see all the prices of the past, the price development for the past 12 months, for example, and edit um, the option to adjust values. You see the forecasts for different prices based on uh, AI and manual override options if needed. And out of these components, basically you can create the forecast we've been talking about for the whole component price tree. Awesome. And, and then, then I guess you can also then see the effects on the bottom line. Yeah, exactly. So everything is connected in the back end. So this is true integrated business planning. So you see the PL statement, you see the cash flow, a balance sheet on one screen, which uh, from my perspective is of paramount importance to have that at a glance to see the fully connected way of planning and uh, simulating so we always work with scenarios obviously and by applying these price ch changes to given scenarios you could see the impact on pnl balance sheet and cash flow uh, in a couple of seconds so that's i think it's it's a game changer in regards to planning with power bi but still even if you see the impact it's crucial to take the right decisions and to work with that data and to assign tasks to certain persons. So for example, here, again, in the context of procurement and savings and spend, you could see who is in charge for which saving initiative in that respect. These initiatives or saving approaches or tasks could be in different stages, like in a regular sales funnel, but this funnel approach would be applied uh, to procurement. So you could see saving opportunities, cancelled saving initiatives, those being in progress, scoreboarded and completed. You could always use native Power BI features to activate and work with these um, kind of information. But even more important, you can use drill down options for these initiatives and then drill through, edit initiatives, edit with a table widget again, and use the latest Actaris visual to connect tasks from Power BI to planner tasks in Microsoft Teams, which then obviously would work like that so that you see the different buckets and tasks in, in different priority levels so that you can take it from there, assign tasks and follow up on the topics and on the most important tasks for the company. 
It's unreal, Alex. Uh, very impressive. Um, and I guess, um, so this is not just a custom project, but this is something that is reasonably standardized as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we are proud to, to launch this module or product uh, in, in the brand new Ecteris marketplace. So it's pre-built content. Um, it might not be, you know, 100% fit. Certainly there is a implementation configuration to the needs of the respective client, but it's a very good start. So typically it covers 50 to 80% of requirements of sales and operations, procurement, supply chain, and it's certainly way quicker. So you could be finished in a couple of weeks with a, with a project like that, depending on, on the requirements, complexity and client size, obviously, but it's really a swift start. Awesome. And, and what have you seen as the outcomes at your customers uh, when implementing these kind of solutions? Yeah, typically our clients save a lot of money, well, depending on the business case, obviously, but for procurement, it's, it's easy if you keep track of suppliers, if you can assess suppliers, different vendors, if you have like a very rigid view on who needs to do what to save money or to improve supply chain and uh, to maybe mitigate risks included in this whole process, then it uh, can be easily savings of, of millions. Um, not talking about process improvements. We have uh, one client who uses um, this tool for project performance management, and they free up time and resources from project managers, which they can then use um, to work on different projects and to make money with projects. So they are talking about um, an EBITDR impact of half a million per year. And this is a 300 um, employee company. So you, you might want to translate it to different sizes. Awesome. Yeah, I think that uh, a very good, very impressive uh, ending um, to this session, which uh, I found super interesting. Thank you very much, Alex. And you know what you guys have done there is absolutely impressive. I think it was a, a very worthy um, initial session of the extended planning and analytics fire chats. And uh, I'm sure uh, we will have you soon again with um, another topic in your very extensive uh, range of, of expertise. So, Thank you very much again. Servus to uh, Vienna, Alex, and I'm um, looking forward uh, to catch up soon. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me and uh, repeating the servus to all parts of the world. Take care. Bye-bye, <laughs> Alex. Bye. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this first uh, session of the XBNA Fire Chats. We're looking forward to see you at another session that will be now uh, recorded uh, every four weeks. So um, goodbye everyone and see you soon.